I'm Jeanette and I am the designer behind Zanette Knits. Welcome to another of uh, my pattern deep dives. This time it's on a, another edition of the Yoke Meditation series and it's number four. I do not have the sweater with me because with all my Yoke Meditation series I end up giving them away. For me the point was to experience the knitting and that's why it's called the Yoke Meditation series with the aim to just get lost in the yoke and meditate over the color work and once I'm done with the project I'm done. I am wearing my only other Raglan color work sweater because the yoke meditation series uh, number four is the first Raglan construction in the series. In this video I will cover the inspiration, uh, the yarn and gauge and needles that I used, the sizing for the sweater, uh, the construction and techniques used as well as some possible modifications. So the inspiration for the whole of this series are Buddhist mandalas uh, and this one is no exception but it is a worsted weight project which means that there uh, are a lot less stitches used in the sweater so the uh, the pattern is very deep running a very uh, large <laughs> and striking for that reason. In this sweater I wanted to do something that I hadn't done before in the yoke meditation series is to invert the color so we're starting with a light main color at the top but once we get to the about midline we invert and the main color becomes the contrast color creating this fascinating effect. The gauge is 18 uh, stitches uh, by 26 rows in 10 by 10 centimeters or 4 by 4 inches and that's a typical gauge for a worsted weight yarn. Um, the yarn that I used uh, as the main color, the lighter color, is Rowan Hemp Tweed. Uh, however, that yarn has been discontinued, unfortunately, uh, but any worsted weight uh, would do. If you're struggling to find worsted weight, um, what I did for my contrast color, um, which was heavy decay uh, rather than worsted weight because I spun it myself. It was in fact my first sweater quantity hand spun yarn um, and it turned out to be more heavy decay than worsted. So I added a strand of mohair to increase the thickness of it to create larger stitches and match the gauge of the main color. And that is something that you can do for any yarn, even your main color. If you if you have DK yarn, adding a strand of mohair will probably get you the right gauge with some needle size adjustments. Um, I used 4.5 millimeter needles, that is US size 7 for the main fabric and for the neckband and the cuffs I used uh, 4 millimeter, that is US size 6. Uh, to get the required gauge. And the needles listed in the pattern that I used are just the suggested ones. If you're a tighter knitter you might have to go needle size up or two, uh, which is what some uh, test knitters had to do. Now the sizing. Uh, this is a pattern uh, in nine sizes and it's recommended to be worn with quite a bit of positive ease. So it's 20 to 25 centimeters positive ease or that is 8 to 10 inches. Um, so the finished bus circumference comes uh, from 101 centimeters to 181 centimeters. Uh, that is 40 and a half inches to 72 and a half inches. Um, obviously, if you like less ease, go with a smaller size. But as usual, the best way to figure out your size is to take a sweater that you love, finish the circumference, and go from there, find, find the most closely matching finished circumference in the measurement table and that should probably be your size. Now the construction and techniques, there isn't really anything crazy about this sweater, it's worked seamlessly from the top down. There are uh, four raglan lines that consist of three stitches and the increases are made on either side of the three stitches uh, to create the, the correct shaping for the different sizes. There are a few sections of the raglan where sometimes you increase for the sleeve and for some sizes you, you stop increasing for the sleeve and uh, the trickiest bit is probably to follow the chart. There are a couple of charts. One is for 
dark main color at the top and one is for lighter main color at the top. And as you'll see in the pattern, it says after each increase, you have to shift uh, the starting stitch in the chart so that you ensure the newly, cre newly increased stitches align with the pattern. And because the chart is quite large and wide, it can get a bit disorienting to figure out where do I need to start in this round. And you also start dif in different positions for the body part and the sleeves. What I found helpful for me was to print out the chart and just use a marker, perhaps in two different colors, one for body, one for sleeves, um, uh, and trace along the sides of the stitches that are the starting stitches for the section. I'm sure it'll make sense when you read through the pattern if it doesn't make sense now. But all in all, we start at the base of the neck. We uh, do some short row shaping by working the sweater flat uh, to shape the neckline. And then we join the contrast color and start the color work. Once we're done with the yoke, we split the sleeves and uh, the body and work those separately in the round. We still follow the color work chart because that one's continuing quite low down. Um, and there are a couple of uh, fake seams at the sides for, for the sleeve as well as the body uh, to co kind of provide a natural break in the pattern because there's not enough stitches in the armhole area to make sure that the uh, pattern repeats uh, get completed. So there, they will be interrupted halfway. So the fake pearl seams on the body act as that natural break in the pattern. And as I mentioned before, the, the contrast color becomes the main color. Uh, in the pattern, it's still referred to as contrast color to, to be less confusing, but you can see that it starts to, to dominate more. And finally, the hem is worked in the contrast color. Um, then you do the same thing for sleeves, working some decreases to get to the wrist circumference and the sleeves in this uh, are um, on purpose uh, longer than you would normally see sleeves. So if too long a sleeve isn't your thing, then perhaps be careful and adjust uh, the sleeve length for you. And once we're done with the sleeves and the body, then we go up uh, here at the neckline pick up the stitches along the cast on edge and uh, work a double folded neck band. When you reach the double the height of your desired neck band, you can join it inwards and uh, work together with the base of it. There is a link to video tutorial for how to do that. Um, and I think that's a great segue into the possible modifications as the sweater is already quite warm. It's a worsted weight and it's color work. Uh, you might want to um, ease off on the neck and not work a double folded uh, neck band. You are free to just do whatever ribbing uh, you wish. And as usual, because it's worked top down, you can adjust the sleeve length and the body length. Um, you probably can't make it into a cropped one because you won't have completed the color work section uh, unless you're really tall. <laughs> uh, the same chart is used for all nine sizes. So naturally for the smaller sizes, there will the yokes are shorter. So there will be more color work to finish in the body. And for the larger sizes, there will be less color work to finish in the body and more of the one color portion showing. But yes, it's it's highly customizable. The yoke is quite deep for it, uh, for most sizes. Um, but in case you like an even deeper yoke, you can just continue following the chart without any increases and split the sleeves uh, when you feel ready. On the other hand, if you feel that the yoke for you is too deep, then you might have to do a little trickier things like double the increases on each round for the body so that you still end up with the correct number of stitches uh, when you want to split. And that requires a little bit more advanced knitting skill. Um, and yeah, as I said before, if you're struggling to find worsted weight or if there's some yarn that you really want to use for this project but it's not the right weight, consider adding a strand of mohair or a strand of lace in a similar um, color. Uh, 
as I said, I did have to add a mohair uh, to my hands pan to make it the same weight as the main color. Um, and I chose to add a really dark mohair because uh, I also wanted to increase the contrast between the main color and the contrast color. So it's probably, well, it depends on what kind of a look you want. If you like a highly contrasting and really pronounced uh, pattern on your sweater, then I would go for a high contrast yarns. Uh, if you prefer a more subtle uh, look and sort of blend it, then obviously go for less contrast. But then it might not show all the intricate details, especially around the middle of the pattern. One more modification that a few test knitters uh, did was they, <clears throat> uh, you'll see at the, at the top of uh, the yoke, uh, there isn't enough stitches for the body uh, to, to include enough of the chart uh, for the chart shape to make sense. So what some of the knitters chose to do is they didn't work the chart near the raglan lines at all until there was enough stitches for the pattern to make sense. So that's another thing that you could choose to do. I personally wasn't too fussed. I'm happy that there's something colorful going on um, and I had less, less very long floats to manage, but it's entirely up to you. And last thing that I'll mention is that we currently have a Zanet Knits annual Cal for the second year uh, going on. It started on the 1st of March and it will continue all the way to the 1st of June. So three months of knitting together uh, with monthly prize draws and a fun bunch of knitters. We have a dedicated Slack as well as Ravelry forum. And if you'd like to join, um, there is more information on our website about how to do that and a discount code that's valid for a few more days if you'd like to jump on. That's it for today's deep dive. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.